Hi all my beautiful friends. So I assume if you clicked on this video, silly of me to assume, but I would assume that you're a woman looking for some tricks and tips in surviving your period. So what made me decide to do this and share just some things that go on with my period and how I survive gnarly periods is that I had a huge event the other day. I took my daughter to her first concert, my husband and I, and of course, hours before the concert, my period hit. I thought that I would explain a little bit about how my periods are and how um, like leading up to them, how they are, and then we would get into some of the things that work for me. Um, I just want to reiterate that I am not a doctor, I am not a medical professional, however, I am a woman and I've been a woman for 35 years. I have a daughter who is 16 and had periods for the last uh, about five years. She got it pretty young and both of my sisters also have periods. My husband has n been nothing but women and tons and tons of female energy um no testosterone in this family the closest he has is two male dogs um my poor husband has been surrounded by women his whole life so if anyone's sympathetic towards periods it sure is him because he's had to deal with it quite a bit so like i said i got my period going to an event typically my period knocks me down for a couple of days um very very harshly and um, I did a couple things differently and I noticed that I was able to go to the concert and able to interact and I was okay. So let's get started. If you're new to my channel, my name is Charlie and I love sharing lifestyle videos with you, whether that is fashion, plus size content, obviously stuff like this, hygiene, periods, anything that pertains to my life that either can entertain you or help you at the end of the day. So if you enjoy that, stick around and subscribe, please. I also figured, I know it's uh, silly of me to assume it's women, but it could be um, maybe even men looking to help young teenage daughters that are single fathers, grandfathers, uncles, etc. So let's get started. So I have come to the conclusion, I know that you probably should be diagnosed by a doctor that I definitely have some sort of PMS, border, borderline like PMDD, is that what it's called? Um, so my periods, once they get here, I almost pray for it to get here because the days leading up are the worst for me. So the actual period itself, I always say to myself, like I can tolerate the pain. It's the exhaustion and the flu-like symptoms and the aggravation leading up to it that is almost like knocks me off my feet. So I can tell my period's coming about three days before it's gonna get here because I have intense mood swings and I'm typically very even tempered and pretty um, level headed. But I can tell you I could probably rip someone's head off knowing my period's coming in three days. I become very moody. I get very unpredictable mood swings. I have hot flashes. Those typical things. Very tender in my breast. Um, and all that I could still tolerate. The stuff that really, really affects me is the exhaustion. The pure and utter exhaustion leading up to it. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm in New Jersey. And the air quality is so horrendous today. We are suffering from the wildfires coming in. So it's extremely windy. And I, I know you might see that in the background. It might be a little distracting. I am sorry. Um, what was I saying? But leading up, I, I literally could tolerate anything. The exhaustion and flu-like symptoms the day, two days before, are so horrendous that it knocks me off my feet. So I can feel it coming because the exhaustion literally... I feel almost sick. So I get body aches, um, fluey, nausea, diarrhea, and most importantly, it's just that damn exhaustion. I am so exhausted to the point where I am dragging ass the day or two before my period and like I said, mood swings. So I guess it's very typical, but mine just feels extremely or extreme compared to what like my two sisters now my daughter unfortunately has a lot of the symptoms I do and her periods are so terribly bad and I know they say you shouldn't have pain with your periods and I call bullshit because it's your uterus shedding and that's why you bleed and I think it's bullshit of course you're gonna have uncomfortable and pain but in my opinion and I should practice what I preach if you are having pain that is like not normal or you're bleeding abnormally where you're going through i believe the doctor said you should be going through a pad maybe like every four hours but if you're bleeding through a pad every hour or so 
I would definitely consult with a physician, go to an OB. We should be as women anyway. And like I said, my friends here, you guys should get on me about it because I've been, my primary care doctor has been begging me to see an OB and I don't know why I have such a fear around it. I'm not even afraid of like a pap smear or anything. I think it's just the idea of going at this age frightens me. But again, you want to detect early symptoms of anything that could be going on, whether it's fibroids, whether you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, etc., and something more serious. And a lot of these symptoms for women are like hair growth, weight gain, trouble losing weight, excessive eating, sweating. You know, being a woman, isn't it just wonderful? So, like I said, I had to do a go to a concert the day of my first period when I tell you most times I'm not even off the couch the first day of my period. It is so gnarly and bad and the same for my daughter. So immediately when I get my period, the first thing I do is I immediately take some type of over-the-counter pain reliever. I personally take Tylenol, but recent years I've noticed that Tylenol has been making me not feel so good. I don't know what it is about Tylenol. I used to be able to take it but I noticed that recently when I take it, if I don't take it on a full stomach, I feel very, very sick. Um, I would recommend an anti-inflammatory like a leave or ibuprofen to help with inflammation and it's, or mitol also. Now, what I wanna share with you is what I use for sanitary pads. I no longer use tampons. I haven't used tampons in years. While my periods are insanely painful, I am fortunate where I do not have heavy flows anymore um, and my period will last me anywhere between three to five days. I'm very fortunate. Um, I know some people's last much longer. Once my period's here, I feel 100% better. Even though I'm in pain and tired, I feel better because once it's here, the symptoms are gone that quickly. Other than being crampy and kind of being doubled over in pain, like I said, I can handle the pain. It's that exhaustion and those flu symptoms combined that just knock me off my feet. So I wore these before they were a TikTok trend. These are fantastic for women who have heavy bleeders, for plus size women. Hell, these are even good for my sisters who are mid-size and very thin, two thin women. One's mid-size, one's thin, sorry. And my daughter is extremely petite, even loves these. And these are the always discreet and this is the size large and these are the underwear. These are so incredibly comfortable, especially for bed. So now my daughter is very, very petite. She's right around 90 pounds and she's about 4'11". Even she will be like, mom, can I have one of the big pads to go to bed in? She likes it for comfortability and for protection, but you guys, these are fantastic. If you're not comfortable wearing these throughout the day, which I don't typically wear them during the day, I can promise you that these are fantastic for nighttime, for leakage, for anything. They also work for incontinence. If you've had a baby, if you're a little bit of a more mature woman, these are fantastic and you can see you get full protection. Now, because I am plus size, I'm gonna share this. It's a little odd, not odd, sorry. It's a little TMI, but because I've lost a significant amount of weight, um, I do have a lot of skin in that area, whatever they call it, fumpas, I guess. So I don't need a lot of protection in the front because of the way my body anatomy is. I need the protection in the back. I notice a lot of leakage in the back. That's why I find these to be fantastic. Obviously, if you're watching this, you're going to know this is TMI, but I thought I could share this with you because as my daughter is bringing home some of her new girlfriends, I just am sort of flabbergasted that they don't have these talks with their mothers and that like her one girlfriend comes from a very um religious and a very um conservative conservative background um to the point where like her dad wouldn't allow spongebob wouldn't allow brat stalls like that much conservative and i noticed that with girls i, I feel like they're um undereducated about certain things especially about the body and while it's not my place to help or to tell them but I'm certainly not going to deny somebody um, a little bit of help if they needed it if you know what I mean as as um, politically correct as I can be like with my own daughter um, I can be a little more forward and explain it the way I feel it's necessary but I try to be careful but what I, I don't even know what any of that meant but what or was what what I needed to tell you that for except that this video is TMI and if you clicked on it, it's probably because you needed a little help. 
what I loved about these is that there's so much thickness and protection in the back. You can throw these on. You're going to be comfortable. You don't have to fiddle with underwear. Throw these on. They're very similar to like a period panty, only I feel like you get such more protection. And then in the morning, you can take it off and just toss it. These are for when I do have a little bit of a heavier flow, which like I said, I haven't in a while. And I am a size 16 on my bottom and a large fits me really well. And I think they go up to a 4X, it says. Is that correct? I always buy fragrance-free pads. I will never, ever use anything with fragrance um, because, one, it's bad enough I get very, very irritated from wearing pads to begin with. I have been desperate for cloth padding. If you have any suggestions or any sites that you enjoy, that you prefer that have giant big pads. I would love to hear your suggestions. I've been begging my grandmother to actually make me um, some out of scraps, like out of old shirts. So while these pads are great for the day, you can see they're not really that much protection. So I, like I've said in past videos, I prefer the ones that are for incontinence um, because look at how big the back is. These are great for plus size women. These are great for women who have heavy flows. Obviously this is the back and it is a little wider in the back, it's, which is like what I said, what I need. And, but you still have plenty of protection in the front. I think these are great. And this is the brand T-E-N-A, Tena Ult, um, Intimates. And you can get these right at Walmart, pretty affordable. Although I do notice that sanitary pads are getting much pricier, which I don't understand why we need to pay for them at all. Okay, so staying hydrated is probably one of the most important things you can do leading up to your period and while you're on your period to help prevent bloating because excess bloating is what's going to cause uncomfortability and cramping. I know sometimes when we get on our period, all we want to do is indulge in sweets and junk food because I am exactly the same way. I know my period's coming because I get an insane sweet tooth or I just start to eat from morning till night. I have to actually control myself because I will overindulge. And then, like I said, the, like right now my period is done and I'm back to normal eating, barely eating throughout the day. But when my period comes, I could eat probably 5,000 calories easily of just junk, and that can be so horrible for you. Alcohol is really bad for you. It all is causes bloating. I know having a nice warm like hot toddy or a drink at night might help with cramping, but I believe it can also be really terrible, and so can caffeine. And anything that causes type of bloating can really, really make you even more uncomfortable and can cause extra cramping that you definitely don't need. So I would definitely try to hydrate. I know nobody wants to drink water when they're on their period. You might want a nice fizzy pop, like a nice Coke, an ice cold diet soda, because you already feel like shit and you don't want to feel worse. But I can promise you staying hydrated is probably one of the number one best things you can do on top of taking some type of anti-inflammatory over-the-counter prescription medication no sorry not prescription over-the-counter medication like an Aleve or an ibuprofen or naproxen or like an acetaminophen like Tylenol can all really really help with that I don't believe Tylenol is an anti-inflammatory so I don't think it works as good but you take whatever you're able to so my biggest thing is heating pads this is what has saved my daughter and I when our periods come. I lay that directly on my belly. And I know you're not supposed to. I don't want to hear it. When you're in, a, in agony and heat is the only thing that helps, you're desperate. So if you cannot afford a heating pad, because, you know, I don't know what everyone's financial situation is. So I want to offer alternatives that you can do at home in case you can't afford even a $20. I mean, $20 to somebody is a lot of money to a lot of people nowadays, especially with the way things are. So if you cannot afford that right now, I wanna give you an alternative. This is the best alternative that I have found. And I actually prefer this method over a heating pad. What I do is I take a gallon Ziploc bag. I wet a dish towel, like a bigger dish towel, get that all wet with warm water. I wring it out, 
I fold it, I put it into a gallon Ziploc bag, seal it up. Most people are going to have gallon Ziploc bags and almost everyone's going to have some type of small rag, whether it's a dish rag, a hand towel, heat it in the microwave for 30 to 60 seconds. I would do it in 30 second increments and that is going to stay warm for probably a half an hour, long enough to get you some relief. Heat is probably one of my biggest, biggest tips when it comes to my period it helps me immensely now i know warm baths are often recommended but a lot of people do not want to sit in a bathtub when they're menstruating i get that it's that's perfectly normal maybe you have a detachable shower head where you can just um spray it directly onto your belly warm hot water it just is such a relief it like loosens up your muscles the heat will loosen up your muscles it will kind of help with a little bit of bloating and it will just you know how you get like real tense and aggravated on your period maybe that can also help i also struggle with breast my breast being extremely sore like if i take my bra off after a long day i can barely touch my breast when my period's coming he's so damn nosy so I would definitely recommend heating pads. And if you can't afford one right now, try that trick, try that trick. You will not regret it. It will help so much. Now, I know this suggestion might make some people mad because you're already feeling lousy, but I can promise you taking a walk when you have your period or trying to just keep yourself a little mobile exercising, obviously is the best thing to do. But even if you just stay moving, I noticed that my cramps aren't as bad. So the day of the concert, I noticed that I was constantly moving and dancing around and I felt better, to be honest with you, and noticed that my cramps were significantly lower. So trying to maybe take a little bit of a walk, a little bit of yoga, moving around, stretching can definitely help. I know you're probably thinking, yeah, right, who in the hell wants to do anything when they feel lousy like that? But maybe give it a try, maybe get up, take like a 30 minute walk, 20 minute walk, it might really help. And again, it will reduce some of that bloating that we have during our period, because I can tell you what, I often have bloating. Herbal teas that reduce inflammatory, I will link some down below. There's one from Yogi, I wrote it down so I remembered, and it's the raspberry tea for women. I will link it, it's like $7 from Walmart. It's an anti-inflammatory tea, again with those anti-inflammatories, you wanna keep up with that. It, it helps, it's delicious, and there's so many options. I will link some of my favorite anti-inflammatory teas. I will link also some of my sleepy time teas that I like that help with sleeping. All kinds of teas that are really good for you, I will link down below. Okay, so last but not least, might sound silly, <sighs> and I, see, I'm not a prude, so talking about these types of things it really is like second nature to me. I, like I said, my sisters are 25 and, no, sorry, 24 and 23, and I have a 16 year old. So I do not have time to be a prude when I'm getting called for every little symptom, every little thing in the world. I had to really kind of grow up fast when I took guardianship over my sisters. I was 27 and they were 16 and 15. And let me tell you something, it will snap you out of anything when you have to raise teenagers having an orgasm. I know that sounds silly, but maybe try it. If you're in severe pain, I believe it releases endorphins, same as exercise. Endorphins make you happy and they can help with reducing cramps. Also, your uterus contracts and then releases when you have an orgasm, which can also reduce cramping. I read that somewhere, so I thought I would share that tip with you guys. So these are just some of the ways that I help with my period and I have helped my sisters and my daughter with theirs. Like I said, I get called for every little thing, any little change in their period, any little change in their discharge, they call me up and I am pretty well versed in things. I always have kept myself pretty educated in, the, in women's health so that I can help them so they're not scared if something changes in their bodies. There is incredible charts online that I follow for like your discharge as well, where it is like normal if it's between clear and white to a milky white and then when you need to be concerned where it's like the yellows and greens and different textures i will link it if i can because i feel it's very very helpful for you not to panic immediately i feel like it's unfortunate but a lot of women aren't educated and don't have resources like they need and i feel like unfortunately depending on the generation you grew up in as well i feel like some like my mother wasn't open about anything um 
I learned a lot luckily from my grandmother but she also came from a generation where <clears throat> um, they were a little more reserved and they didn't talk too much about certain things so I always made a promise to myself that I would help my daughter and never let her be embarrassed by her body by sex by normal things i never wanted her to feel shame um i grew up also catholic which i know might be like what the hell is that gonna do with anything but religious guilt is a real thing especially when it comes to women's health women's body hiding covering things up not talking about things it's all bullshit. i think we should share and help that's more most important is educating and keeping yourself educated and up to date with everything that you need to so if you are like me in need of seeing a doctor get your ass to a doctor and just get your checkup and make sure that everything's running good um i know a lot of women a lot of people in my life i know have um my sister recently was diagnosed with a fibroid i believe she was having a lot of pain on her left side and I think they saw a very very small fibroid but not enough to do anything for it and as long as they'll keep an eye on it whenever she goes in for her next appointment I know another woman that has um, I believe she might have polycystic ovarian syndrome just because of the amount of hair growth um, I don't like diagnosing people um, I also was told by my doctor when I noticed I was getting Quite, I've always had hair growth on my face, but recently in the last like three years, I've noticed it getting significantly worse and coming down my chin. And I've noticed that I have a lot of trouble losing weight, but every time I get blood work, it looks like my hormones have been pretty good. But I know that those are also symptoms of something that could go on with your hormonal. Um, recently, I, I don't know if the adrenal gland is like a um, link to hormones or not, but I know my grandmother's adrenal gland was very, very low. And I think if I'm, maybe it might not have anything to do with it. I think they treat that with maybe a low dose of testosterone. I don't know for sure. Like I said, I am not a medical professional, but if you think that you are struggling with something that you need to see a doctor, I encourage you to do so. It's so important to take care of your health. And like I said, I definitely should practice what I pe preach. So I just hope this helps somebody to, um, just be maybe relatable, help somebody if you're struggling with anything. Maybe some of these tips will help you. If you have any tips, I would love you to leave them down below. Anything that you think I should try, any teas, any methods that has worked for you to uh, get through those days. Like I said, once my period is here, I am perfectly okay. It's absolutely the days leading up to it that are literal hell. So maybe you have suggestions for those days that I'm PMSing. Like I said, I hope this just helps somebody. I would love you to stick around and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, I don't care what it is, feel free to leave it down below and I will help you as best as I can. And if I can't, then I'll try to figure it out for you. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.